Hey, hey, everybody, and welcome back to another State of the Market ending April 2022 for Bonstable County. Uh, I'm your host, Scott Zeno with the Scott Zeno Realty Group. For those who have not uh, watched a State of the Market, um, we do these every month to keep everybody abreast of what's going on in the market. Uh, everybody knows that real estate right now is uh, the big hot topic and in interest rates. So uh, we appreciate everyone uh, jumping on and watching the video. Uh, we have uh, taken, we take great pleasure in doing these videos for you. It not only keeps up us on our toes and keeps us abreast of the market, uh, but it also uh, helps um, with all of our sellers and buyers make the right decisions, right? Everything is about life is in timing, right? We've heard that before, timing is everything. So when to sell, when to buy, when to hold, that type of thing. So I want to jump right into it. I uh, hope everyone's having a good day and uh, everyone is continuing to stay safe and healthy because COVID is still out there. So I am going to just share my screen with you guys. All right. And then I am going to uh, pull up this. So. Every month we talk about the uh, four quadrants, right? To a healthy uh, real estate market. We talk about things like uh, uh, median sales price, um, the amount of active listings, uh, um, days on market and uh, months of supply and things like that. So let's jump right in it. We're gonna talk about the uh, median sales price. So look what happened here between March and April. The median sales price took a massive jump to $670,000 for your median sales price. Now that's Barnstable County from uh, Plymouth to P-Town. But look at here in March, it was 585. Today it's, well, 685 would be 100,000. So it jumped up $85,000 uh, in the course of one month, okay? Before that, we were hovering between 500 and 600. And now the median sales price has jumped to 670,000. So if you're in the market to buy a house uh, based off this graph and based off of the numbers in the past, try not to wait because the prices just keep going up. I know people are saying, I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna wait for things to slow down. I'm gonna wait for the market to adjust, but we just don't see anything like that in sight right now, especially with this big jump from March to April, okay? A year ago, the median sales price uh, in April of 2021 um, was 588, all right? Today, it's 670, all right? Uh, next, we want to talk about uh, homes for sale or active listings. So today, there's 409 properties on the market for sale. That does include condominiums. That's not a lot of properties. Um, a healthy market for us is back a couple of years ago when there was a couple thousand houses uh, for sale at one given time. Today, it's 409 which is a jump up from March. March, uh, we had an average, uh, we had 404 listings on the market. Today we have 409. Uh, and you can see back here, September of 2021, it was as high as 771, all right? But for today, we're at 409 for uh, listings on the market, which hence, is why the market is so robust. Uh, there's just not enough inventory for the amount of buyers uh, supply and demand, right? We all learned that in um, high school, about supply and demand, all right? So the next thing I wanna talk about is the days on market. So uh, this tells us as uh, sellers and buyers and people who are interested in real estate, how long it would generally take to sell your house. So we're still hovering at six days on market, which is very, very low. So here's the magic question. Scott, if I list my house, 
is it going to sell in six days? My answer to that 100% transparent would be, it depends, okay? It depends on the price point. It depends on how it looks uh, inside and out. And it depends on the location. Um, so uh, if you price your house accordingly, okay? And you present it properly and it's properly promoted, meaning it's exposed to the world, yes, you should sell your house in six days. Because I'm going to tell you what's going on, okay? The agents are prepping the house. They're listing them on Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday as an active listing, right? And then Saturday, they'll do an open house for a couple hours. Sunday, a couple hours. And then all offers will be in by Sunday night. And the seller will make a decision on Monday. So when you take that all into consideration, it's pretty much hitting the market like on a Monday or Tuesday. And it's sold less than a week later, which would be five or six days. Hence, the six days on market. Not all properties, including my own, have sold in six days. Some of them take a little longer, um, maybe two or three weeks. But it's still a fantastic time to sell. Uh, but the average is six. Now let's look at March. So March was seven. So we, you know, we dropped by a day. <clears throat> February was twelve. 13, but take a look back here. You can see February of 2021, it was an average of 30. Today, we're six days on market to get your property sold. So if you're thinking about selling your home and you price it right, it looks right, and it's promoted properly, uh, it should sell. Most of our properties that we've been listing, quite honestly, have been doing the exact same routine that I just mentioned to you, and they're sold usually within a week. As long as we do our job and uh, promote it correctly and the sellers do their job as far as pricing it accordingly uh, with their uh, professional real estate agent and making a smart decision on what the home is actually worth, um, it'll sell in six days. All right. So let's talk about months of supply, right? So months of supply, just to give you an idea, uh, four to five months, that's a neutral market, right? So you got four to five months of supply. It's like a neutral market, right? That's what they call it. If you have uh, more than uh, five months of supply, say five, six, seven months of supply of inventory, right? Like the stocks, uh, the shelves are stocked nicely. Uh, that would be a buyer's market. Anything less than four months, one, two, three, or four months, less than four months of inventory is a seller's market. And we've been in a seller's market for a while. so. Um, your uh, months of supply as of today are 1.0. So that is a, that's right, seller's market. How long have we been in a seller's market? Let's look and see. It's been a while. Uh, March was one month, seller's market. February, less than a month, seller's market. So when you go all the way back here, December a month, November 1.2, October 1.5, all these are all less than four, right? So we've been in a seller's market for, uh, looks like a minimum of a year. This graph goes back further, but it's only showing me a year. So um, is it a good time to sell? Absolutely, all right? One month for your days, uh, month, months of supply. Um, so the, uh, the, the shelves are pretty much empty. And there's uh, plenty of buyers out there still coming into the store to buy something off the shelves, but the shelves are pretty empty. All right. So the next thing that I want to go over with you guys is my slides. I've got some dynamite slides that I want to share with you, right? Whoopsie. Right here. And what we want to do is we want to talk about the impact of the rising mortgage rates of the housing market today. So that seems to be the big topic. Everyone's talking about the interest rates. Have they gone up? Yes, they have. We're going to talk about that. So um, the mortgage rates rising this year. So today, uh, as of March 31st, we're sitting at 4.67. Now, this graph is only from January of this year. And look how steeply it's progressed 
uh, started out at January 6th at 3.22, right? We saw some dynamite rates for a long time. Look at these rates, 3.4, 3.5, 3.6, 3.9. 3.9. And then just about late March, they jumped up over four. Today, they're at 4.67. Will they reach five? I would say probably, uh, but I'm just guessing based off of what I hear and see, all right? When uh, the Fed is trying to rise up the interest rates, what they're trying to say in a nice way is let's slow the economy down a little bit. And I don't know where these rates are gonna end, but I can tell you one thing. Um, when I bought my first house back in 1987, my interest rate was 8%. I remember when I was young, like 15 years old, <clears throat> and I remember my dad talking about interest rates and he was happy to lock in at 14%. So my word of today is, yes, the rates have climbed. A lot of these awesome, fantastic rates are behind us. Um, 4.67, 5%, 5.5, even 6% is an excellent rate, even though we've been kind of spoiled over the last few years with these low rates. So. 4.67 is where we're at uh, at the end of March. And I do expect those to most likely go up a little bit more, maybe not quite as quickly as they did here over the last few weeks, but maybe a smidge here and a smidge there. So mortgage rates are likely, likely to continue to move higher throughout the balance of 2022 although the pace of rate increases is likely to moderate, much of the increase in rates in early 2022 is in anticipation of what will happen later this year, especially with the Federal Reserve interest rate policy, okay? So, history suggests that when rates rise, there's an initial bump in home prices, which we just saw last month, right? They went up a bunch. Uh, the, there'll be an initial bump in, in home prices as many buyers move quickly to buy a home before the rates go up even further. But after that period, home prices could plateau or slow down a little bit. So we might see a little bit less aggressive price uh, inflation over the next few months. Freddie Mac analysis shows that a 1% increase in mortgage rates results in home price appreciation that is about 4% uh, percentage points lower. For instance, a 1% increase in mortgage rates would change home price growth from 11 to 7. So what they're saying is every time the rate goes up a point, home prices reduce by 4%. And right now, home prices around here have been around nine or 10% lately. Last year, they were up uh, like a 20. Um, so um, every time that rate goes up a point, home prices go down usually about 4%, all right? With rates rising and expected to rise throughout 2023, it makes sense to obtain a purchase or refinance mortgage if you are in good standing. So what they're saying is um, they're expecting the rates to go up please don't wait. So it's better to buy now than you know, why pay more later if you don't have to. I understand people get different situations with work and, and timing and things like that. But what they're saying is uh, try not to pay more later if you can buy today uh, because things are going to continue to go up um, as well. So let's talk about the spring housing market update. We keep watching for it, but there are absolutely no signs of a market slowdown anywhere in the data. If anything, we're seeing the market continue to heat up. Quick example, last week, we posted a house on Wednesday. We did open house on Saturday and Sunday. We had 50, where's my hand? We had 50 people show up at the open house. We had nine offers and we put that house on the contract um, Monday afternoon. All right. So that's kind of typical of what's going out there. Not in all price ranges though, okay? This house happened to be um, about 500,000. Um, the higher the price point, uh, you may not get as many people in, but it's still brisk, uh, very robust market. 
and you still will get offers if it's priced right, if it's promoted right, and if it's presented right. Okay, the three Ps, right? We've talked about that before. So let's talk about this next slide here. Active listings increased for the first time in six months. So that's a good sign. So when the interest rates went up a little bit over the last few months, here's what happened. Some people pulled out of the market. Some people decided to stay, you know, take a break, go on the sidelines. But these are in thousands. So in March, we had 382,000 uh, active listings. This is throughout, you know, United States, obviously. Um, and the month before, we had 376,000. So 376, so 300. So we went up uh, from three, 376,000 active listings to 382. And that's the first time in six months that, that, that that's happened. Because if you look at the graph, you can see here, it's nothing but a downslide on active listings. But here in March, it's the first time in six months that we've seen an actual increase in active listings. So that's a good sign for buyers, okay? It could be a sign uh, that's telling us in advance that, you know, there are going to be more listings, you know, coming on the market. And that number of 382 might go to 400,000. Who knows? But it's on an upswing is what this slide is telling us. Now, more industry insiders are throwing out their previous forecasts and replacing them with more bullish short-term outlooks. That's because the industry insiders had all these forecasts, but things have changed so rapidly and so quickly that they're actually going back to their desk and they're rewriting some of their forecasts and some of their uh, outlooks um, because things didn't quite go the way they anticipated and they actually went higher, okay? So indeed, some experts say the 2022 spring housing market might go down as one of the most competitive on the record, okay? That right there speaks volumes, okay? That speaks volumes. Uh, let's go here to number 20. So this is a really good slide. And what this does is this keeps us real estate agents with a pulse on the market. And the way that we do that, one way, we have all kinds of the ways that we track, right? But this one here hits home because this is showing. So this is telling us how many people are showing up to show property. How many buyers are out there looking to open a door and get inside the house and, and look at it. And take a look at these numbers. So there's a program out there called Showtime. And um, it tracks all this information when people go in a house, when they leave a house, and any feedback. And so they take all that data and they compile it. And here's what we have. So showings are up now higher than pre-pandemic numbers. So I would imagine these are in thousands. So 271,000 homes were showed in 2022, which over last year was 240,000 homes but look at pandemic, uh, March of um, 2020, that's when the pandemic came about and where everybody was out scrambling looking to, to buy a house. There was 160,000 showings in 2020, it went up to 240, and now we're at 271. So what this graph is basically saying is there's no slowing down of what we see as buyer activity looking at property, okay? That's about the best way I can sum that up is there's no slowing down. Hey, look at that house that we had last week, weekend that we put on the market. We had 50 people come through. That's a lot of people looking for a house. And unfortunately, it only went to one buyer, uh, but that's what's going on still, all right? Let's take a look over here at number 27. So we've seen this slide before, but it's a really uh, important slide I wanted to share with you again for any new uh, viewers that uh, have not uh, watched the state of the market. So what they're saying here is there is a potential growth in household wealth over the next five years 
based solely on increasing home equity. If you purchased a house for 360,000 just in January, I mean, we're not talking that long ago, we're talking January, February, March, April, talking four months ago, right? You bought a house in January for 360. What they're saying is over the next five years, one, two, three, four, five, that same house that you bought for 360 is gonna be worth 456,000. So 360, 460, almost $100,000. They're quoting $96,342 in home equity if you bought a house for 360. Now, if you bought a house for 700,000 or a million, those numbers are gonna certainly be higher than that. But what they're doing is they're going over the, the average base price here throughout the United States, say it's three, 360. The average homeowner is going to increase $96,342 if they were to hold the house for the next five years. Okay. So this inflation, uh, this um, equity position, increasing the equity on your home, it's based on price appreciation projected by the home price expectation survey. Okay. Home price forecast for 22%. So everyone's putting in their two cents and saying, how much is the market going to go up this year, Scott? It was, it's was it been like 20% last year. Uh, right now, we're at probably closer to 10%. So core logic is predicting a 9.6% in, increase in home price forecast for 22. Um, HPSE was at 9, Fannie Mae was at 7. MBA was 6'6, six, six, Freddie Mac at 6'2, NAR is at 5.1, and Zellman was at 3%, which is pre pandemic. Okay. Years before the pandemic, your house pretty much went up 3 to 4%, pretty much, pretty average over the years. And then, of course, we're in where we're in now with higher, um, high price um, uh, increases. So the average of all the seven forecasts would be about 6.7%, which is about twice the normal in a normal market. So um, I would go with what the pros are saying and home price forecasts will be going up, might be as little as 3%, could be as high as nine, but probably average out somewhere around six or 7%. Depends on the interest rates, right guys? Every time those interest rates go up, the home prices dip down a little bit. All right, let's take a look at number 35. Home sales. So this um, is telling us the average days on market. We did the average days on market on the Cape, right? It was only six. This is um, coast to coast, all right? So the average days on market coast to coast is 18 days on market, all right? And then uh, number 37, existing home sales. So typically, uh, the real estate industry would sell about 5 million homes per year, right? You see this here, 5.3 million, right? So it bounces up and down a little bit, 5.3, 5, 5.5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 6, 5, 2. Typically, it's somewhere in the 5 million range, right? In January of 21, it shot up to a little over 6 million. And January of 22, we're, um, uh, we're just around, uh, probably around uh, uh, 5.9 million, right? So they're predicting, um, you know, higher home sales than ever. Um, and that's hard to believe because inventory is so low, but that's where they're at. So uh, let's see, we got number, let's see, 47 here. So. I want to show you this slide because a lot of times we talk to people and they'll say, well, we're going to wait for the market to slow down. I'm going to wait for the market. Some people even say, they'll you know, wait for the market to crash. I hope not. I don't want to see anything of a crash, but uh, there will be probably at some point a correction. So uh, back, you know, years ago when there was a big uh, real estate crash here back and probably like January of 2012, there was 35% um, of the properties um, were in foreclosure or short sale. And you can see this graph just keep going down to nothing. Here we are, January, February, 20%. 4% is about 
average that you'll see. There's always going to be short sales, guys. There's always going to be foreclosures. It's just the way life is. Um, and the average is about 4%. And here we are at January of 2022, less than you know 1% of uh, properties out there are foreclosure or short sales which means we have a very healthy uh, real estate market, okay? Um, let's talk about home prices. Home prices, change in home prices. So this is year over year, January uh, of 22 here. We're up at, you know, 18%, okay? Which is exorbitantly high, right? The increase we've seen a lot of nice uh, home uh, home sales going on record uh, for way over asking, and this is the result of it here. Uh, typically, you can see, you know, your home would go up in value every year three, four, five percent. That's right in here. You see this, okay? 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, right? And then the pandemic, right? 2021, 20, 22. So this year they're not they're predicting not quite as strong at 18 percent. Maybe like that pri uh, slide I showed you previously. Maybe somewhere closer to nine or ten. All right. This is the year over year on price change. This is what we saw last year. Some places, the United States has as high as 20 percent, and they're forecasting five. We saw that slide before. It was little as three. It was high as nine. It averaged about seven. All right. And then let's talk about housing inventory. So this is um, months of inventory, homes for sale. 2011, 9.5 months of inventory. That would be a buyer's market. So... Anytime you see this number over four, right? So January, 2011, uh, there was nine, nine and a half months of inventory. In 12, it was six and a half months of inventory. In 13, it was four and a half months of inventory. This is still a buyer's market, right? But then you see what's happening here. It bounces up and down a little bit. And then you see right here, where we are today in January of 22, 1.5 months of inventory, seller's market, okay? So this is just a, um, a graph that shows you the amount of inventory and how many months of inventory to share with you what kind of market it is, whether it's a seller's market or it's a, a buyer's market or a neutral market. So it was, you know, years ago when inventory is much higher, it was a buyer's market, then it's kind of shifted down. Here we are today to less than a month and a half of inventory, which makes it a seller's market, okay? Months of inventory for homes for sale. This is just within the last 12 months. This goes back to, again, you know, what type of market we're in. We're in a seller's market, 17, That's from March to February. That's a whole calendar year. And it's been under four months. So for the last year, it's safe to say it's been a seller's market. Okay. When that 1.7 number gets up over four months, then it'll be a neutral market. And when it gets to five or six months of inventory, hopefully someday it will. Um, and that would be, it would return back to a buyer's market. Okay. Got a few more slides here for you guys. Then we'll wrap it up. We got buyer demand, all right? So we don't want to leave out the buyers because the buyers are a very important part of the real estate business. Sellers need buyers and buyers need to buy homes. So we know that right now there's a lot of emphasis on interest rates and in sellers, but let's talk about buyers and what their position is and what's happening with them. We know, number one, more than anything, there's been more showings now than there's ever been based off the showtime graph that I showed you earlier. So Here's what's going on in the Northeast, right? So let's talk about the Northeast because that's where we live, right? Showing activity jumps in February as 109 markets record double digit, 
double digit showings per listing. Year, year over year increase in showing activity in January 2022. So seeing 109 markets, so this is based off 109 markets with such impressive buyer traffic is remarkable. A year ago, we were amazed to see 75 markets hit double digits in showings per listing. The heightened activity is widespread with 17 states having at least one market averaging in double digits. So what they're saying here is uh, there's been a 16% increase in showings in the Northeast. Now, on an average, it's 12.5. In the Midwest, it's been 10%. So there's a lot more people, it looks like here, looking in the Northeast than in the, in the Midwest. And look at the South. So when you take the South, you're taking you know, Arizona, Texas, uh, maybe even Carolina, Georgia, and of course, Florida, 19.5, okay? So there's a lot of people. I heard the other day, 1,200 people a day are moving to Florida. I don't know how true that is, but that's what I heard. And then in the West, uh, up the California way, you can see their showings are down for whatever reason, People are migrating uh, what looks like out of the West uh, for whatever reason. Um, maybe it's prices, maybe it's fires, maybe it's earthquakes. I don't know. Maybe it's job relocation. But for the Northeast, that's what we're concerned about, 16.6, okay? Let's talk about this here, mortgage rates one more time. Today, we're sitting at 4.67. Do we expect that to go up a little bit? Perhaps maybe break five, all right? But here's a 30-year fixed rate, uh, what's been going on uh, since uh, January. So three years ago, four years ago to today. Here's the graph. So, you know, uh, January of 2018, you know, they were four and a half, you know, 5%. And then over the last couple of years, we've had some phenomenal interest rates. I refinanced my home at 2.65. I don't think I'd ever see that again. And I'm grateful for that rate. Uh, but that's how low they were, right? So guys were getting, you know, people were getting the interest rates down in the low to mid twos, you know, if you had, you know, good credit and you qualified for it. Uh, but those lately have been going up, 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 up lately. So the last couple of months, uh, you can see here, um, they're up to 4.675 at the moment, okay? They're th threatening to go over 5%. Couple more slides, guys, and we'll wrap it up. Mortgage rate projections, okay? So what they're doing is they're projecting for the second half of this year into 23 a little bit, third quarter of uh, 2022. Um, Freddie Max thinking 37, 38, 44, 37 with an average of 3.9, but we're already way past that. So these um, uh, um, companies or these people that put out these projections, obviously they're gonna have to uh, retweet those because this is kind of like a month behind. Uh, second, uh, fourth quarter, they're thinking 4%, we're already at 4.7. And then they're even predicting into possibly 2020 through 2023, first and second quarter, maybe things will drop back down. So maybe if the time isn't right for you now, maybe next year in January, February, March, or April might be a better time. The rates might drop a little bit, but you know that's really kind of pushing it, bringing out your crystal ball because nobody can really predict that far out. We can only predict them what we have in maybe the next 30, 60, 90 days, all right? But for, for, for today, uh, you're sitting at uh, 4.71 for a 30-year fixed rate. Now, you can get a lesser rate if you do an adjustable uh, mortgage, okay? Which is another conversation, but some of the banks are doing five and 10-year, uh, what they call ARM, arm rate. So it's an adjustable rate mortgage. And it kind of goes up and down a little bit with no mat with the uh, ability not to uh, increase at a certain point. But if you can get a 30 year fixed, I think you're better off. But if you can't, and the lower rate with the adjustability, if you're only going to live the house maybe five or 10 years, it might be worth looking at. I know when I bought my first house, we took an adjustable rate because the rates were like nine or 10 percent. And I took like an eight, eight and a half percent adjustable rate. And that made my mortgage more affordable. And I was only going to stay in the house three to five years anyway. 
uh, which is I did, and then I sold it, moved on to something else. So it actually worked out good. So take a look at adjustable rate mortgages uh, because those uh, may be the difference between you uh, being able to afford uh, your dream house or not. So where are the interest rates going, Scott? Well, that's a good question. Again, this chart, this graph is showing uh, the past of where rates were uh, from as uh, early as um, 2018, and then how they dropped and they spiked where we're at today at 4.7. And then you have some projections, right? So these are the professionals looking through their uh, crystal ball saying where are they going to go and they're already lower than they expected the rates that they projected are actually lower than what they are today because they're at 4.7 so we will have to make an adjustment on that graph as well things are happening so fast in the real estate market guys you know things change overnight now business so uh, that's uh, number 71 so that is again another graph on where the rates have been right, as low down here, and then where they're going. So I want to stop my screen share with you guys, and I'm back. So I just want to say thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of State of the Market here um, uh, on the Barnesville County uh, from Plymouth to P-Town, right? So uh, we're just finishing up the month of April, and we want to thank you so much for taking the time uh, to walk with us over the last uh, 15 or 18 minutes. We hope that you find these uh, videos and state of the markets helpful. We want all of our buyers to make smart decisions. We're the experts, we're the professionals, we have the data and we're happy to share it with you. If you have any questions at all, our door is always open for anybody that knows us. You guys can call me with any question, no matter how small or how big. My number is 508 566 0051. That's my direct cell. If I don't answer it, I will surely call you back. Or if you want to send us an email, uh, you can send me an email at sjzano at gmail.com. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all your support. Letters, text, emails. We look forward to helping you, whether you're a seller or a buyer. Um, and uh, that's all we have for today. We'll catch you on the next uh, State of the Market for May. Uh, but that's it for today. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Talk to you soon.